You will not believe what is behind these doors. I'm at Dwar Design in Bath to see some of the nicest components I think I've ever seen machined. So now we're inside and as you can see it's bigger than what you think from outside and the organisation is just something else. So Ed, can you just give us a bit of a background on who you are and what you make? Sure, my name's uh, Ed Mason and I run Dwar Design here, myself, just me. Uh, and I do a mixture of bicycle parts, so titanium, predominantly bicycle parts, as well as some occasional job shop and uh, small batch work. So how did you get into this industry? So I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, used to be a design engineer at a number of very large, big corporate firms, but I've uh, been a cyclist for all my life as well, uh, and I just kind of pushed the two together really, so I took my design and machining experience uh, and turned it into a, a small, although quite successful business, making bike parts here as well. I think there's something about cyclists and engineers. Everybody seems to put the two together. Yeah, the two go hand in hand. I swear most of the cyclists I've ever met have been some kind of engineer. So what sort of parts are you making? Uh, predominantly parts for a drivetrain. So we're talking about chain rings, jockey wheels, uh, and then also parts that hold um, other components that other manufacturers will make. So seat clamps, uh, top caps for headsets, uh, as well as some other parts that potentially will be coming in the future too. Now, obviously making some of them must be a bit tricky so what how have you so from when you started to now what's been sort of a big improvement um so all sorts of kind of things really uh partially being able to buy a slightly larger machine also being able to have a fourth axis but also being able to change setups really quickly so going from one setup to another without having to change work coordinates reprobe realign all of those kind of things uh, and lang has been super useful for that kind of work so You've said Lang's made this easier, so what sort of Lang work holding are you using? Uh, so predominantly the zero point system, uh, so I've got uh, two 96 mil plates and I also use the 52 mil spacing on my fourth axis, which means that I don't have to realign the fourth at all, and it means that even if I take the fourth completely out of the machine and put it back in, I know my offset's still going to be in the same place. Now, talking about taking your fourth axis out of the machine though, because <laughs> most people would put it away somewhere nice, but you've got a little... St a step further with that, so For what sure. happens once you actually take the fourth axis out of the machine using the Lang pins? Uh, yeah, so I can release the Lang pins really quickly and then the, the fourth is free. And because I don't have an overhead crane or an engine crane or in fact any way to lift it and it's too heavy for me, uh, I've designed and made a laser cut steel uh, hoist that picks the Lang system up or picks the whole fourth axis up and slides it over the top of the mill uh, and then sits into some studs that I put on the top of the machine. So you've even made it that your fourth axis is on a quick point plate on top of your machine, not just in the machine. Yeah, definitely. You know, if you're running, if you're running a part that has some vibration and your fourth is sitting on the top of the mill, the last thing you want to do is, is have it moving around up there. Yeah, because I bet that's annoying. <laughs> definitely. So how quick has it made your setups going from no sort of quick point plates to having all quick point plates. Oh, night and day, really. Like I've gone from uh, I've gone from you know maybe half an hour to an hour's worth of setup to literally being able to change parts in ten minutes. Now you have all different types of tombstones for the different components you make. Mm -hmm. So having the Lang on your fourth axis does it just make it so much easier and so much quicker to change over? your work holding as well? Yeah, so not only have I been able to reduce setup time between jobs, but I've also reduced the number of setups per job because I have you know, more than, one, uh, more than one orientation I need to hit. So with the fourth and a tombstone, I can make a lot of parts with fewer operations for each part. Now, obviously people are quite taken back sometimes by the cost of the actual systems in general. So what would you say to someone who's thinking about taking the plunge into it and sort of on the fence a little bit? For me personally, I don't think I'd be able to make the business that I run work without it. The investment has been easily worth it.